Hi, my name is Zai, author of the Heroes Fall book series. To give you an idea, the first book was 152,000 words, second was 141,000, and the third is already at 137,000 on the first draft. That's a lot of typing. I've also played Quake for over 17 years, so I don't want to be uncomfortable while playing. This means that keyboards are quite important for me. The question is, how are you meant to decide which mechanical keyboard is right for you? I'll go through a list of factors for you. The first being the key types. Cherry MX are the top of the line, and they will usually cost more too. That's not to say the others are bad, but the quality is something to consider. We'll use Cherry MX as a base to understand the different key types, and there are four main types. You have the reds, the browns, the blues, and the blacks. There are other kinds out there, but as I said, these are the main ones. So the newest key type are the Cherry MX Reds, which have a low actuation force, meaning they're easy to press in, and they're the keys on this Corsair K95 RGB. There's no tactile bump, so when you press it in, it's nice and smooth. If you want a quiet key for podcasts, streaming, or just not waking people up in the next room, this is the one you should get. It's also a good choice for gamers, because without the tactile bump, there's nothing to slow your fingers down. Personally, these are my favourite, and I've made them even quieter by adding O-rings. O-rings are just these little bits of rubber that you place underneath the key. The down key has an O-ring, the left key does not. So to put on O-rings, we just lift the key off, put it over the centre there, make sure it's on like that, then just put it on. Now the key is quieter, but it doesn't feel as crisp anymore. Some people like the crisp feeling, I don't mind the dampened feeling, because it does mean it's quieter and just a bit more comfortable to type on, in my opinion. Here's just a quick typing test, I'll start slow and then get a bit faster, just so you can get an idea of what they sound like. Also of note, because these have a low actuation force, meaning they're very easy to press in, sometimes when I'm resting my hand on the board, I will accidentally press one in. So this is a Cougar Attack X3 mechanical keyboard, and it has the brown switches. They're basically the same as reds, but these have a tactile bump, and require more force to activate. Here's another typing test for you. and that's without O-rings. So you can hear it's quite crisp and the key is bottoming out. So they have the tactile bump, which is about there. They're a bit harder to press in, but otherwise they're the same. While I do prefer the reds as my main, I have to say that having a tactile bump is a bit more fun to type on. The next is the black. There's no tactile bump on this, it's actually a lot like the red. The difference is that this has a higher actuation force, meaning it takes more to actually press it in. So if you find that you're accidentally pressing the keys in too much, the blacks might be the choice for you. And lastly, we have the Cherry MX Blue. These are the ones that are loud and clicky. They don't require too much actuation force, and they do have a tactile bump as well, plus the extra click. While you can't get many boards with these, I don't have one at the moment, but I do have the Razer Black Widow Chroma, which uses the Razer Green Switches. They're basically the equivalent of Cherry MX Blue, but I think they're based on the Kale switches. Here's a typing test so you can hear what it sounds like. And that's precisely why people love them. You'll find a typing test I did on this channel with thousands of views because people just want to hear them being used. I never used to like them, but after owning this keyboard for a few months, I totally get it now. It's a different experience typing on them. Would I use them as my main board? No, I like to ninja stealth everything. But as a secondary board, absolutely. Just to summarize, the reds are most popular for gaming and streaming. No tactile bump, easy to press in, very smooth. 
The bronze is similar, but have a tactile bump, not as easy to press in. Blacks are the same, but without the bump, and harder to press in. And the blues have the tactile bump, are loud and clicky. I've actually put O-rings on all of these, so even with the O-ring, the blue is still quite loud. The next thing to consider is the amount of keys. If you get a 10 keyless or compact board, it won't have the number pad, so it'll just be this section. This board has a standard layout with the number pad, and it uses a function key with the keys up above to give you extra keys. The Corsair K95 not only has the number pad as well, but it also has the extra 18 keys on the left. Personally, I use all the extra keys to open folders and programs, which saves me a lot of time during work. If you use a board with extra keys on the side, it will probably take you time to adjust, because instead of hitting control, you'll probably end up hitting G16, because you're used to going to the edge of the board. Still, that's something that you can get used to pretty quickly. Other boards like the Razer Black Widow has a function key, and also just a few extra keys on the side. So what do you need? Will the extra keys help in games or work, like for me? Maybe even binding macros? Or are you happy with just a standard layout? Next, you can consider lights, feel, and design. The Corsair K95 RGB is a very nice shape, has brushed dark metal, and it has a rubber-coated wrist rest. RGB lights, of course, this is a premium board. But not everyone wants to spend over $200 on a keyboard. The Cougar Attack X3 is actually only $80 on Amazon at the moment. If you want one, check the link in the description. And that brings us to the next point. If keyboards are very important to your setup, then I can't see anything better than the Corsair K95 RGB. If you want something a bit cheaper, but still with extra keys and RGB, boards like the Razer Black Widow Chroma are great. If you want a cheap board with some high quality keys and design, plus some good features, then boards like the Cougar Attack X3 are really good. I really like all of these boards in their own ways, so it's just a personal preference. Which one is going to be right for you? You might not find the exact board you want, but there are a lot of good options out there. So figure out which key type you like, consider how many keys you need with the extra functions, then decide how much it's all worth to you. By the way, you might want to look into software for each board as well. I'll leave some links in the description if you want to buy these boards on Amazon. Click the links on screen for the reviews. I'll try to answer questions below, but I've only tested about 8 or 9 boards, so I'm not familiar with all of them, and while I would love to review all the boards out there, I can't afford to buy so many. They're quite expensive. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope that helps, subscribe if you haven't already, like this video, and I'll catch you in the next.